it's pretty it's pretty straightforward but you can see right there that these trusses do sit higher than these ones so there's okay. going to be a drop in the plate Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. We are at a gorgeous home site right now. We are pretty much secluded out here. There is no neighbors this way, no neighbors that way. If you go down the street a little bit, there's some houses down there. But as you can see, we have this beautiful view out here. I'm very thankful to be working here for the next couple months. Facing that way, we've got the mountain range. We have the vineyards. It is a very nice view. Super rad to be out here. We're gonna take you through all sorts of details in this project. We also partnered with our good friends at Huberwood to build this project. So we're gonna have this place fully wrapped along with some new products from Huberwood. That is probably my favorite part because on this build, it's a pretty unique one. We don't have overhangs, we don't have eaves, we don't have a soffit. We have walls that run straight up to a mule tail. It's a pretty interesting detail, but we're gonna get into that way later on down the road. It'd be nice if they were pushed out because then we could frame our wall and then stand it and we wouldn't have to worry about the pipes being there. Um, got an anchor bolt one inch away from the pipe here. So, I don't have a plate marker, but we're gonna go old school. We're gonna pull our numbers back. This will notch out. We'll be taking out three and a half, out three and a half. Well, I can 
only hope for the best that there's no more modifications that need to be made before this plate will be built on. There it is. All right, now we're off to, oh, interior walls. The battery should be charged here in a second. Plate stop short of this next wall. Well, this weather is really yeah. nice compared to yesterday. You bring lunch? I brought a sandwich that'll so feed two. No, I'm okay. I think we might. That'd be nice. <gasps> you brought Goldie out. I did. Very nice. So right now I'm waiting on a Huberwood delivery. I have a bunch of panels getting dropped off. But when we first start a build like this, we typically spend a day with a couple of us. Jay and I, for instance, yesterday, came and mapped this place out, made sure that we were good to go. So we verified everything was square. We verified everything was parallel, went through the whole entire place. And this makes sure that we're good to go once we start framing because the thing is, if you come out here with two guys, verify everything, and then everybody comes out the next day, you know you're good to go. If I bring out four to five people first day and something's wrong, I have four to five guys waiting on something that needs to be fixed. So Jay and I came out yesterday, just the two of us, laid this place out, got everything the way it should be, and now we are plating going absolutely crazy. And we're looking great so far. Fox has this whole entire side nearly wrapped up already. Steven's wrapping up the other side over there. We have work going on towards the back of the garage. There is stuff happening everywhere. Now that we have plate down, what I'm going to do is go through our openings and start working those. We still need to double plate, so we still have to put our top plate here before we can actually do any real serious layout. So first things first, what I'm doing is going through and marking out all of our openings. The architect will give you a number from the corner of the building to the center of a window. I'm going through and marking out all those centers right now. That way we have them down on the plate and we're good to go. So on this one, I was eight foot 11 and a half to the center of this window here for this bathroom. So I am marking this with a Sharpie to where it's nice and bold, easy to see. We've got this one here marked out, that one there, this one over here. We'll keep working our way around. Have you ever wondered what a story pole is? A story pole is something we make in the beginning of a framing project to figure out what we need for bottom cripples, top cripples, sills, and headers. What we're gonna do is take a piece of plate. We're going to lay it out as if this is a wall assembly. So we're gonna mark inch and a half right here. This is going to be our bottom plate. From there, we have 104 and a quarter studs for nine foot walls. So we're basically replicating a wall assembly. So we'll butt that bottom plate. We know that our studs are pre-cut at 104 and a quarter. From there, we have three and an eighth for our double top plate. Mark that as well. We'll hook the bottom, and that is 109 on the dot, which is nine foot one, exactly where we need to be. So this is our window schedule here on the plans, and we have the width of the window, the height of the window, and the header height of the window, which is actually a first. I have never seen an architect lay out the header heights on the window schedule. This is super helpful. So you can see that the majority of these are set at eight foot for the header. Let's work this really quick and figure out what we've got. Let's take R as an example. We have a 3050 and it is eight foot for the header. So we saw on that little window and door schedule that we needed to be eight foot for our header. So we're gonna mark eight foot. This right here and above is where the header will sit. The header will change depending on what size window or door we have. So this could be a six by eight, this could be a six by 10. And these lines here represent our top plate. We have nine and a half in between here and here, which tells you that we could have a six by 10 and we won't have any top cripples. So then it is a 5-0 window for our height. So we're gonna, at the bottom of that header there, we have five foot. So now here's where things can get a little confusing. Butting the header down to this, I'm five foot. My window is a 3050. So the width of my window is three foot. The height of my window is five foot. So from the header down, five foot. On this building though, I have recessed windows, which is complicated. We're gonna have to talk about this more in depth. I'm going to add three inches to my height and my width, making 
63, three inches over the rough opening, what I need to be at. We'll talk more about how those recessed windows frame out. So that's where it'll be at now. We'll mark out three and an eighth for our double sill plate. So now these represent the sills for the window. This and up represents the actual rough opening. Down here will be the bottom cripples. So we can pull a number from the bottom plate that we have marked out up to here and we can see that 28 and an eighth will be our bottom cripples on a 3050 window with the header set at eight foot. So you go through and map out the whole wall assembly and put your headers and your window sills in and that dictates what you have for bottom cripples, top cripples, and everything in between. So ultimately what we're doing is we're laying out bottom plate, we're laying out our studs all the way up to there, our double top plate up top. From there we put the header in here, we pull down, get our rough opening dialed in, put our sills in, that gives us our bottom cripples, our top cripples. We can also get our trimmers if we wanted to in here. So when we start detailing on the plates, what we're gonna mark out is the bottom cripples, the top cripples, the headers, and the sills. All of this is found doing a story pull just like this. It is. Most of the time they put it in those structural details. I've always seen it in like here, which is what I was looking for because that's like, that's good stuff to know. <laughs> I would really like to figure out whether we have any double trimmers before we start cutting mass headers because if so, they're all three inches short. If he, he's gonna get them stocked right now, I just need like two minutes. I just need to try to find it if it's on here. So prior to actually building any walls, I like to go through and make sure that everything is right. The more I can plan ahead now, the better off the project will go once we start framing. It's actually getting windy out, which is kind of nice. I have one area where I have no top plates. I just have the header running across and the two plates run into it on both sides. There'll be a strap connection there. Um, what I'm looking for right now is figuring out how many trimmers I need on my bigger openings. Where you have an eight foot opening, most times they'll have you put a double trimmer on both sides. So that changes your header and your sills. But let me show you guys the detail that I found for these six by eight. I've said it a million times, reading plans is just like putting together Legos. We have a structural wood framed wall designated as that symbol there. Unless noted otherwise, on adjacent overall plan, wall shall be framed with two by six studs. Everything on this project is two by six, which is really cool. Refer to schedule below for stud spacing and headers. Headers are typical unless noted otherwise. So we have stud size two by six all the way through, wall height 10 foot, 13, six, 15. So where we get taller, we'll have to go with an eight inch on center or a 12 inch on center. On our openings less than five foot, we have six by eight headers all the way through for all of those. And then openings greater than five foot, we have per plan. Let me give you an example of that. So on the bigger openings, they call it out specific for the area, just like this here. On the smaller openings, they don't. So here's another example of that. We have a six by 10 called out for here to here, but over here we have no header called out. It is less than five feet, so that will be a six by eight as per plan. 